Right, thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Brian Turner. I am the CEO of Buildings IoT. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about us, you can find us at buildingsiot.com. Um, today, the topic is data is messy. So um, as you've seen it, before the show and all during this conference, you've seen tons of products and devices for your built environment. Every one of them has this awesome API, right? Every single one of them. And, and actually, the data that's coming from IoT devices is exploding. I mean, and it's going to continue to explode. Um, so it's fantastic, right? Or, or do we have a storm coming, right? Do we even know where we're going? So no doubt you've heard something on this screen. We have an open API. It's awesome. It's secure. It's, it's cloud-driven. It gets everything you want, and it's real-time. All those things are said. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. And the, the data coming through the API is going to be well supported and always backward compatible. Right? We hear it. We know it's there. What are developers thinking? So, you know, all of us, we go back, we tell our cloud team, hey, it's great. We're, we're going to put these five new technologies in that, that we just saw. We're going to put them in a building. We're going to pilot all of them. And it's perfect because they've all got an open API. So how are we going to do that? Right? So the reality, this is typical, right? So these APIs, every single one of them is different. So even though I might have the same exact technology developed by two different people, the way that they've organized their API is going to be different. The terminology they're using is different, even though it could be talking about exactly the same thing. The security is different. So, hey, I've got Scram authentication method over here. I've got some other authentication method over there. That's easy, right? You're just going to maintain multiple Authentication methods, no big deal. And then the data definitions are, again, very specific to the vendor. So do I refer to it as a building? Well, no, I don't have to have building concept because I'm just a sensor. So they don't think about what you have to think about as a, as a real cloud developer trying to organize these APIs to actually make something meaningful and actually get something out of that data. Those of you who've been around a long time remember something like this, where all of our data is trapped in silos. Except back then, it was trapped in silos that nobody wanted to give you data from. Now it's trapped in silos where everybody's got an open API. Just all different keys. So, you know, just imagine the, uh, the guard here with all his different keys, and make sure you got the right key for the right cell. And as long as you have that, you're good. At Buildings IoT, we've, we do a lot of R&D and a lot of thinking about these problems, because this isn't something that's going to go way easy. We're not going to end up with BACnet for the cloud. You know, there's not going to just be a single protocol that every single device manufacturer is just going to start doing. They thought they did that by opening APIs. So it's, it's nearly impossible to expect these thousands of manufacturers delivering solutions to buildings to suddenly transform their business and everybody consolidate into one thing. It's just not going to happen. We can talk about it, we can meet about it, but it won't happen. So what we think that has to be done is we actually need something to consolidate APIs, make this stuff easy. Um, if, if the answer is that every single building owner or operator has to have a cloud development team in order to make use of the data that they're paying to install in their buildings, that's not going to work. The problem is there's no tooling out there today to allow systems that are in the built environments to talk to cloud applications like a HubSpot or a Zendesk or a Salesforce, right? Things that I actually might want to take BI tools and have them operate with our systems, our operational systems that are in our buildings. So we, we uh, had a, a few clients that demanded this. Um, you know, things where uh, a developer, I, I'm pretty sure one of our uh, clients, cloud developers, sent us an email telling us to ditch this crap. I think that was the exact terminology. And in reality, we can't just do that. We can't just say, well, OK, we'll take out building automation system A, who has a bad API, and we'll put in building automation system B, who's going to have a better one. The fact is, they're all the same. They don't, the, the people in the field, in the, in the real world, in the building world, they don't think the way that the cloud architects do. They don't organize data the way the cloud architects do. And they certainly don't think about authentication the way cloud architects do. So in this way, we actually develop something where you don't need 
cloud architects in order to make these data, this data work. It's very similar to other technologies where we can actually have, hey, I've got a BACnet system here, okay? I wanna have it connect up and we'll make connections for that. And then I wanna connect it in this case, um, it's on point, which is actually SkySpark under the hood using the Haystack API. Now, some of you may have heard of Haystack. It's supposed to be you know, the primary solution for normalizing this stuff, except that not everybody's adopted it, right? So it's a very good one, but still not everybody adopts it. So in this case, we're actually taking the Haystack API and then making it work with HubSpot, because guess what? HubSpot doesn't care about Haystack and never has and never is going to. But we had a real opportunity here in this application, wanted to take analytics data and create a ticket in HubSpot and then when the ticket was closed in HubSpot, I wanted it to go back into OnPoint, rerun that analytic, and make sure that it's still, it's either solved or it's still going. And hey, guess what? If it's not solved, it sends it back to HubSpot and says, hey, whatever you did didn't work, try again, right? So I could either hire every single one of you that owns buildings, could hire a cloud architect to do this, or you could simply plug in and configure how you want these things to work. So again, and then you get to map. So just, hey, I've got this data available coming to me from OnPoint. I've got this data where I can read and write in HubSpot, and I just map this across. So most IT type or even facility type people can, can organize and get this data built the way they want. That's what I have to say. Uh, again, data is messy. So we've got to do a lot of work to clean it up. Thank you. <laughs>